Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this spline tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make an animated wave animation for a background section like this. I'm going to show you how you can transform a section like this where you just have a simple SVG path back here into something like this, where you can have an animated wave kind of moving throughout the page right here. So this tutorial is going to be broken up into two sections. The very first section is how you can create this wave animation. And then in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can embed it inside of an Elementor website just like this. So let's just jump into Spline and get started. And here we are on a brand new uh, Spline file. So let me go ahead and delete this default rectangle that they always add. You can keep this directional light in if you want. So let me first show you what I'm going to be doing. This line right here is actually just an SVG path that I created in Illustrator. And so there's two different ways that we can go ahead and tackle this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just import this SVG and then make that my wave uh, shape right there. You could also trace it or start from scratch. So I'll show you kind of the both uh, ways you can approach this. So let's jump back into Spline and I'm going to import that line that I just showed you. I'm just going to click and drag that SVG into here. And as you can see, this is what the wave looks like right here. And what we have to do is now convert this to a path. So as you can see, this is the shape of our wave right here. Now, like I said, if you don't have it already as an SVG, what you could do is click this button right here at the top called the vector tool. And essentially you could just draw inside spline a very similar shape. So in this situation, you start here and you can go down like this, curve it around. So if you don't already have the shape as an SVG, you can go ahead and do it that route. But let me just go ahead and delete this and show you the next step. The next thing we're going to do is create a custom shape for this. So if you go into your new shape right here and where it says path extrusion underneath shape, uh, Spline gives you a few different uh, templates already. So they have rectangle, circle, polygon, star. So if you switch to any of these, it's going to change the shape of the spline itself into either one of those. But what we want to do is create something called custom. So let me go back into my front view and show you how we can just create something very simple and assign it to that shape for that path. So first thing is you go up here underneath your vector tool and just create something kind of unique. So you want to do something like this. We're going to be doing like a wave, so let's just make it look like a wave. You can make it come down like this. So the good thing is you're not locked in to this design. So you could always go ahead and change this later in real time and it will update the wave. So something like that might actually work. So let's go ahead and now give this a name. So that shape, let's just call it like base shape. So now you know that that's the base shape and then this shape right here. Let me get this actually out of that layer. So if I go into here, delete. So our normal shape is here and our base shape is that one. So go back into your normal shape right here and underneath the pass extrusion, you're going to choose custom this time. And now underneath object, you're going to select the one called base shape. So as you can see, when you do that, it automatically is going to change that. Now let's go ahead and change the material of this now so we can visually see what's going on because right now you can't see any of the depth or detail of the shape. So just select your main shape right here and underneath material, let's just go ahead under something like reflective and maybe something like horizontal reflection two or something. Okay, so now you can see it's starting to already kind of literally have a shape. So if you notice, uh, it looks really thick. So what we're going to do is actually let's change the shape of this and I'll show you in real time when you change these vertexes, it's automatically going to update this shape right here. So if we go back into our custom base shape right here, all you have to do is click right here where it says edit on the right. And now you can go ahead and start editing these points and you'll start to see when you edit these points, it will update the the model right here. So you can see that right there is already changing shape. So let's go ahead and um, tighten this up a little bit because right now it's too big. So what you could do is change all the shapes like this, make it a little bit tighter. But yeah, you can see right here that it's already shrinking in size. Maybe that one's a little bit high, you go like this, 
change this to that, you know, whatever's gonna work for your use case. But let's go ahead with something like that. And once you're done with that, you could just hit uh, this little X up here and now you should be good. And another little trick is if you go right here and change the size of this automatically, you're gonna see that it's gonna change. So you might have a use case where you just need to go like that and your shape should be good. So if that looks good right here, you can see that doesn't look too bad. So if you notice that it's a little bit too wide right here, you can always go underneath your base shape right here and just change the X coordinate right here. So you can see right here, if I start to shrink it, it will make it a little bit tighter. So yeah, that, you, you could do whatever you want, of course, but let's go ahead into the front view and this doesn't look too bad right here. Now what we're gonna do is start adding the animation to it. So we're gonna start to mess with the twist and the angles and everything, and then we'll be able to embed this on our website. What we gotta do is go underneath your states right here, and let's first just click the plus button, and you're gonna have a base state and a regular state. And then let's just go underneath events now, transition. Uh, we're gonna do this at the start. And then we're gonna choose base state right here regular state right here and depending on how long you want the animation in most cases you probably want it to be pretty long so let's do like 20 seconds loop you can do infinite and then you can do like a ping pong or ping pong reverse reverse is pretty cool so it will go through the animation and then like reverse it and then go back so it will never end it'll always just kind of be cycling through now let's go back into our shape right here our base shape and what I like to do is stay in front view as if this is how it's going to look in the website and let's start to mess with the angle a little bit so you can see you could start like this so in this case I have like an angle 55 and you could start with your twist you know whatever you want it to be so you can do it something like let's start at like 148 could be good and then if we go underneath the uh, you saw what I just did so underneath states now we're going to be at state so this is what it's going to animate to so we can change that angle change out the twist a little bit and that should be good so now let's go ahead and just hit the play button let's just see what we're working with right here so you can see right here there's like this weird like overlapping so I'll show you how you can fix that but you know it's abstract it could be however you want it to be. So if you want it to be faster or more twist, you can always go ahead and do that. But if you have a situation like this where it looks a little bit weird, what you can do is go into your main shape file, hit edit path, and in real time, you can start to mess around with these points right here and see if that's gonna fix any weird overlapping. So you can see right here what was happening is it's like overlapping the meshes and it doesn't know what to do. So if you pull this out, mess with these curves right here, pull that out, bring that down, bring that curve. And a lot of this has to also do with how the twist is. So yeah, just be careful with how many times you twist it, stuff like that. But you know, if that looks good right there, you can always just kind of roll with that. So once you're happy with how the animation is gonna look, what we can do is a few other things and then we'll be ready to export this. What I recommend is underneath your base shape right here, click this button so it hides it because you don't want that base shape to be inside the viewport at all. Now what I recommend is if I go back into the website, uh, this right here, the dimensions is like 1920. So what I like to do is go into uh, the frame size right here at like a 1920 aspect ratio. So if I go underneath frame, so what I'm doing is just selecting out in the middle of nowhere. And then if you go to 1920, right now if I embed this on the website, it's gonna be cut off right here. So what I recommend is zooming in right here to something like that with your camera. And now you're gonna see that it's gonna be filling up the whole width of the background. So once you're happy with that, I can zoom in a little bit more. And we actually don't wanna keep it on full size uh, for HD, we want it to be responsive. So what you could do is just go back into responsive and now that's how it's gonna look on the website. So if we hit play, this is kinda of how it's gonna look. And if you wanna always mess with textures uh, before you are ready to export, just go into your base shape right here. And then we just assign one of the preset horizontal reflections, which I think is a pretty cool effect already, but uh, I won't cover it in this tutorial, but there's a lot of different settings, of course, you can do inside your materials, but let's just keep this tutorials nice and simple. 
Now we can hit the export button and we'll be ready to embed this on your website. And here are the settings that I always like to do is I rarely ever like to use this one right here. This is using the iframe. I like to go underneath viewer and then you're going to just want to make sure everything is set up correctly. So your camera is your personal camera. We didn't set one up. Uh, logo is to know. And then in this situation, you can do loading if you want. This will add a little loading animation, but I don't think that's really necessary for this. Hint, none, and we're not going to do any mouse events. Next, underneath your play settings, logo set to no. Let's go ahead and hide the background. You can keep page scroll on and keep the default cursor. Put all of these to no. The touch settings, we don't want to have the user any ability to do any touch settings like on a mobile device. And then don't set any of these right here. And then you can keep the trigger by default. Materials, you can just keep normal. Compression, what I like to do is performance. And that's it. So now we go to overview, hit update viewer. And what I like to do is always click the run test button so you can see that this file is going to be 223 kilobytes, which is not too bad. And the biggest thing that's causing that page to be a little bit larger is the polygon. So when you start to do that custom shape, it's automatically going to add a lot of polygons. So in a situation like this, if you add more and more of these waves on here, it's just going to increase the file size and everything. But I think that's not a bad file size, you know, to embed it for a background. And once you're happy with that, what you're going to do is go up here and just click copy embed. So now that you have that copied, what I'm going to do is show you how you embed this on an Elementor website. So you can click the video that's popping up right now to follow the rest of this tutorial.